Historians estimate that between 1500 and 1870, more than 11 million men and women were carried across the Atlantic Ocean in ships like these. The passengers were forcibly transported from Africa to the West Indies, Brazil, or other lands of the Americas. These people were enslaved Africans, and their lives on board the slave ships were filled with pain, suffering, and death. In the 1500s, Europeans saw enslaved Africans as a source of inexpensive labor for their colonies. European planters established plantations, or huge farms, in North America, South America, and the Caribbean. As the plantations grew, more slaves were needed to work on them. Slavery had existed in Africa since ancient times. Some African kings and merchants captured people and sold them as slaves to European traders, as well as to Arab merchants. When the demand grew, kings often sent their warriors to attack neighboring villages for slaves. The Europeans treated slaves like cargo. They were locked inside cells for weeks until ships could take them to colonies across the ocean. For slaves, life on a slave ship during the Middle Passage was a nightmare. Even crew members were shocked by the conditions in the slave holds. When I had to enter the slave deck, I was forced to crawl over the slaves. The Negroes are frequently packed so close together that they have not so much room as a man in his coffin. I was so overcome with the heat, dense and foul air, that I nearly fainted. It was only with assistance I could get on deck. Alexander Falconbridge. Although the transatlantic slave trade, the bringing of slaves from Africa to the Americas, was abolished by U.S. law in 1804, some traders chose to ignore the law. They continued to capture Africans and transport them across the Atlantic. On June 28, 1839, the Amistad set sail from Havana, Cuba, bound for the Cuban coastal town of Puerto Principe. On board, Captain Ramon Ferrer carried a cargo of 53 African slaves, purchased in Havana. An African on board the Amistad, named Seneba Pie, fought the men who tried to enslave him and other Africans. One dark night, Seneba Pie, called Cinque by his captors, unlocked his shackles using pieces of metal he'd found on the ship. Working quickly, he freed the rest of the slaves, and they prepared to attack their captors. The Africans took over the Amistad, the cabin steward translated the Africans' demand, sail the ship back to Africa or the crew would be killed. Instead of sailing for Africa, the currents of the Gulf Stream pulled the Amistad north. In the summer of 1839, American newspapers along the eastern seaboard reported wild stories of a ship manned by black pirates. An American ship called the Washington found the Amistad and captured it. The ship, including the Africans, was taken into custody. The Spanish government, which had colonized Cuba, demanded that President Martin Van Buren send the Africans to Cuba, where they would remain slaves. But former President John Quincy Adams thought that the slaves should remain free. He argued that since they had been taken from Africa illegally, they were not then legally slaves. For more than a year, Adams fought for the Africans' release. On March 9, 1841, the Supreme Court of the United States announced its decision. It is the ultimate right of all human beings in extreme cases to resist oppression. <laughs> 
and to apply force against ruinous injustice. Do you speak African? Well, neither do the 1.1 billion people in Africa. There's no reason the nation of Africa cannot and should not join the ranks of the world's most prosperous nation. It's not actually a country. It's a continent of 54 very different nations and more than 2,000 languages. But it's constantly misunderstood or misrepresented. Any mention these days of what was once called the Dark Continent conjures up lazy images of war, famine, corruption or disease. Who has time to mention the 22 Nobel laureates from nine different African countries, right? And guess where four of the ten fastest growing economies in the world are located? Not in Europe. Yep, they're in Africa. Which of course has issues with poverty and inequality. But let's not forget that one in three Africans is middle class. And the continent is one of the fastest growing markets in the world for mobile phones. And guess which one of these two places is in Africa? Wrong. But all this growth comes from foreign aid, right? That's where most of the money comes from, surely. From Western handouts. Nope, not true. In fact, foreign aid represents only 2% of Africa's total GDP. In 2010, Africans living outside of Africa sent more cash back to their families at home than the rest of the entire world provided to the continent in foreign aid. How about the plight of poor African women? Well, the continent has had seven female presidents. The United States, still waiting, I'm afraid. Meanwhile, Rwanda has the highest proportion of female parliamentarians in the world, 64%. Over in the UK Parliament, it's a record 29%. But you know what? It's important that we focus only on the doom and gloom across the continent because every 60 seconds in Africa, a minute passes by.
Mustard.